We have a 2003 Toyota Camry LE having a little shimming problem when you hit the brakes. We found out that the bushing, the rear bushing of the lower control arm needs to be replaced. Well, with these cars, you can buy the whole lower control arm for, for a cheap price. This is the new control arm. This one is for the right side of the car. It comes with a new with all new bushings and a brand new ball joint and nut. We're gonna need a 22 millimeter socket, a 19 millimeter socket, a breaker bar, and a box wrench. 19 on one side. That's the only side we'll be using. And to do this job, you loosen this bolt, which we already have loosened, right? And this 22 millimeter on this side for the front part of the control arm. There's two 22s, but we cannot reach the second 22 because it is behind the transmission mount. So using the 19 millimeter socket, we have to remove the, the top nut and the bottom nut. Then we can extract this mount so we can reach the other 22 millimeter bolt. This is one of the 22 millimeter bolts that we have to loosen on the front of the control arm. And the other one is behind here. We'll show you that when we remove the mount. Okay, I decided to use a ratchet wrench on this, so that's a, that it makes it makes the job easier than using a regular uh, 19 millimeter wrench. This is the top nut for the transmission mount, but make sure you jack. So put the transmission mount on the jack, the transmission casing on the jack and jack that up in order to hold the transmission up when you remove the, the mount. I already prior loosened the, the bottom one and now we're going to jack the trans out and remove the mount. Okay, using the screwdriver you're going to remove this, that cap right there and inside of that hole will be a 17 millimeter nut that I have already loosened, right? And the second one is up in this hole that I've already removed and that will enable you to move the bracket, the, the mount for the transmission, all right? The nut that I just took off from the bottom is located below this point. Okay, that's the bottom of the bracket. Okay, so. And the other one is on the other side. On this side over here. To allow proper clearance, for the mount to come out, right? Because it's hidden up against the bracket up here. After jacking it up, couldn't get the car high enough to pull the mount up. So we had to go under the hood and loosen the bolt on the other transmission mount so the car will, so the trans, engine and transmission assembly will rise up a little more. And the bolt is located right here. This is the bolt head for the, the, the front mount for the transmission assembly. Loosen that. You don't need to take it all the way off. Just loosen this a little and then you should be able to pull that bracket out. Now we have proper clearance to pull this bracket out of the way. Then we can reach the, la the, the other 22 millimeter bolt. Okay, now I'm going to extract this bolt. Got 
both bolts out. Pry this out, loosen the three. Let them bolt that holds their ball, their, their ball joint on to make it easier to get uh, this bolt, which locks the ball joint into the um, spindle. I will extract the bolt from the back of the control arm. And then the arm should be able to come right out. I don't know if you can see it, but there's cracks all along here, right, where the rubber is separating from the metal housing. This one is not that bad, but the customer could feel a little shimming when he break. To remove the ball joint, I could have done this with the control arm already on it, the old control arm on problem was I couldn't get to the cotter pin to extract it. So I loosened this, these, these three uh, nuts, removed the control arm, then I was able to extract the cotter pin, right? And then loosen this nut. Now you can, e after loosening the nut, you can either use a fork if you have one, to separate the ball joint from the spindle or you can use a, a, a baby sledge and beat on this point right here and that will jar that loose. Once it's loose, remove the nut. Ball joint will fall out. And it's all good, it's, it's good that we went with the whole complete unit because as you can see, this ball joint is very loose. It's not bad, but it's very loose. It should be very tight. I will show you on the new one that you can hardly move it. Okay, this is the new ball joint. I have to apply a lot of force to move it around. Okay. This piece right here came off the end face of the front control arm bushing, the flange of that, that faces the back of the car. That's where this came from. If you missed it when it was coming off, check the other side of the car. Slide this in. Get the real one in as best as you can. It won't be, it will not be lined up. Right now we're more concerned with dropping the two bolts down and through the front control arm bushing flange. Just to hold it in place. And we're gonna put the second one in back here. Might not be able to see it right now, but Second bolt goes in back here. You can run it down a little bit, make sure it go down through the hole. You're not trying to tighten it because a nut goes on the other end. 
just trying to get it further down in the hole. Like the front one is not going down, so that's fine. The back bushing is not lined up, that's fine. Now we're gonna drop, we're gonna run up the tire, um, the ball joint into its place on the spindle. The ball joint on the end of the control arm have to go up in this hole. But we need a jack to help us jack it up in there. So we're gonna position the jack right underneath here. I'm gonna locate this up to the hole. Now that it's in the hole, we can jack it up slowly. Let it down a little bit. Okay, jack it up. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't grab hold of the backing plate, which would be this plate right here. And bend that, okay? Take it up. Take it up. Just wiggle it around as he jack it up. You need somebody else with you to do this. Okay, stop. Now we can put the nut on there because we have enough of that ball joint thread protruding. All right, put the nut on there. Let you jack down. Make sure you don't drive that ball joint all the way up because you might have a little problem getting the nut on because of the you know, uh, CV joint, which is right here. Okay, now the nut is on there, I'll run it down a little bit and leave, and leave it just like that. And then go back onto the, putting the rest of the bolts in for the front and the rear bushing. Just for, an F, for your information, this subframe right here have threads in it for these two 22 millimeter bolts, this one and the one in the back, right? So do not force this through. Screw it down into the hole, else you will mess, if you start banging on it, you will mess up the thread. Make sure you start it by hand first. And if you're using power tool, make sure you turn it about three or four turns before you apply the power tool. I'm gonna run these two down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Back one. If you don't have power tool, make sure you get yourself a nice breaker bar and put a good on it. If you have a torque wrench and you want to torque it down, look up the torque specs, which I do not have, and tighten it down. Now I'm going to put the, the trans, the side transmission map back on. All you have to do is drop the three studs on the bottom, drop them down in the hole, one on the top. Okay. And then you get somebody to let it down as you guide this into the hole. What I'm gonna do is raise it up a little and get it into the hole. Don't get your finger caught in between this. 
raise it up a little the three on the bottom will be in a hole the top one will be in a hole a little bit and then you ask your buddy to let it down go ahead let it down Good. let it down okay once it starts going up in there you can let go of it if you get your finger caught between the transmission uh, mount and that flange you will holler Okay, we're gonna replace these two nuts right here. One here, and the other one I cannot see because I'm not under the car. I have to feel and the other one right here. This one is already in place. I'm gonna screw this back up. And then I'll hit it with the air. Okay, and get, give it a few turns. One is up there a few turns. Air gun. Turn that compressor on. It's good. Lose some pressure. I'm gonna at the same time I'm gonna tighten off this one on the put mount and these others. Right? to snap these caps back in place. Okay, that keep uh, the corrosion down, keep water from getting up in there and corroding, making it difficult in the future to loosen those nuts. We had a little problem lining up the rear bushing hole with the hole in the subframe to get the bolt up in there. So what we had to do, which might be advisable when you're doing this job, is to take, disconnect the tie rod end, the sway bar, the top bolt for the sway bar on both sides, move that out of the way so you can move the strut assembly away from the tr control arm get the control arm in a more level position parallel to the floor and then that will make it easier for you to get the back bolt in through here to align the holes to get the back bolts in for the rear bushing okay we already have it in there now got the nut on we're not going to tighten anything down yet okay and now we're going to put the ball joint back in the, its hole. Tie rod end back in. Sway bar back in the hole on the strut assembly. Nut on everything and then tighten the whole thing down. You can use your jack handle or a long bar to press down the control arm so you can line up the hole for the ball joint. Okay, press down. All right, holes lined up. Let it up. Okay, let it up. Take yeah. the bar up. Take the bar up. Okay, jiggle around. Ball joint will pop up in place. Then you can get the nut back on the top of the ball joint. And tighten that down once everything is else is in place. in back in place sway bar and we leave the sway bar loose because we're going to be doing the other side but with um,
And if you're not doing the other side, you can pop the sway bar back in place. Okay, just run it, run this enough to thread for the nut for the sway bar. Up in this hole, having a little problem there because there's not enough space between. Normally it would be easier, but this 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 sway bar. I mean, has a grease fitting on this end, so it's not allowing me enough clearance here. We could take the grease fitting off and it will pop right in. But since we're doing the other side, we're not gonna bother to do that now, okay? Get down with your ratchet wrench or your regular 19 millimeter wrench. You can tighten the top nut on the transmission mount. Get a longer wrench. We can put more torque on it. The longer the wrench or the tool is easier, the more torque you can apply. Watch you don't bust your knuckles. And in fact, when you're doing stuff like this, try and keep your hand open. Because if you keep a fist like that and it slips, you might get some skin taken off your knuckles. Okay, that's tight. And we're gonna tighten this one here. By using the impact gun. With, I believe a 17. No, I'm sorry, that's a 19. and uh, a 19 up top. Technically, you should always tighten the nut and not the bolt. This is something I learned in engineering school. But in some cases, it's easier because I can reach this bolt head more easily than um, using a ratchet wrench to work the nut. Let's tighten uh, the nut for the ball joint. Okay, once you tighten that, you run the cotter pin back in it, and you're good to go. Correction. Please do not do what I was about to do. Is forget to put the tie rod and nut back on and lock that with a cotter pin because you will lose control once you hit the first bump or something. Make sure that it holds for the cotter pin lines up and then run the cotter pin through it. Cotter pin will only go on the castle nuts, the nuts that look like a castle top. This will be a castle nut, what I call a castle nut. 
Okay, with this done, put the wheel back on, and then we are good to go.